hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel if you're new to my channel hello and welcome to my channel my name is summer so this video i want to share with you guys this story of a uh, there's a pastor in a delta state that is called a pastor ayo urishe jafo right his marriage just ended you know why the news kind of got my attention um, is that i remember i was quite young then i was a new born again christian then when his uh, first wife's life ended and it was rumored it was never proven as far as i know i don't think there was a police investigation or anything like that but there was a rumor then that um, it was the one that ended the life of his uh, first wife it was a rumor that was being said on a low key and uh, shortly after the first wife's life ended he married uh, this wife now as far as i know that's yeah he married her if i'm not mistaken she was a choir girl then like i was growing up in benin so the rumor was really big then right and uh, there were rumors that there was something going on between them okay let me read to you guys how uh, uh, pm news shared this uh, story right so the news says that um, ex khan president uh, Christian Association of Nigeria, that's Khan, right? Said, Ayori Oshijafo's marriage crashes. So it says, former president of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan, Pastor Ayo Oshijafo's 25 year old marriage to his wife, Ufoma Bernard Helen, has reportedly crashed. The duo were said to be at a loggerhead for a long time before the marriage finally hit the rock over protracted misunderstanding. Unconfirmed sources have alleged that the marriage crashed due to infidelity, among others. Well, they said unconfirmed, so we can't say it's just an accusation. So, so then it says, Orisha Jaffa is about 20 years older than his wife. He married Helen in 1997. 13 months after his first wife, Stella, died. Together with Stella, they founded World of Faith Bible Church together uh, on November 15, 1987. It was gathered Helen had in 2020 allegedly accused her husband of wanting her dead. Okay, the second wife accused him. Why I find that interesting, like that's why I'm saying that pricked my attention. She's saying that they say there's infidelity and she said he wanted her dead right and then there was room at that time that he was unfaithful in his marriage and that this lady who was a choir mistress then if anybody that knows this story please correct me if i'm mistaken there were allegations or rumor that he was having whatever with her and that when the wife died people accused him of ending the wife's life because of her they are now they're saying again that there's infidelity and this one said wanted her so you're not asking yourself it was a rumor then that he was unfaithful and then the wife's life ended. And this one too, the same thing. I'm just saying, making it look as if history is repeating itself. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Okay, let me continue. It says, a top source close to the family told PM News that Orisha Jaffa had truly parted way with Helen over protracted uh, disagreement. The source alleged that apart from infidelity, which the pastor has accused the wife of, there are other reasons which led to the breakup. One of such has to do with the Eagle Flight Microfinance Bank, or founded by Orishajafo in the name of his church, Word of Life Bible Church. The pastor had said the bank belonged to the church. Helen was the chairman of Eagle Flight Microfinance Bank. It was alleged that Helen changed the bank documents to her personal name. I didn't read it all before I started doing this video. Okay, this was said to have angered Oriche Jaffo, making him to act promptly. Oriche Jaffo, a top source said, has also shut down the African Broadcasting Network, ABN, where Helen used to be the head in order to curb her wings. <laughs> Calls by PM News made to the phone of Pastor Oriche Jaffo to confirm the uh, veracity of the story was not picked. You see, when you make videos like this, some people think you're trying to claim to be perfect and all of that. That's not what it is. When those of us, like, okay, not every one of us will want to be a politician. But when we now elect, or when we now see people that are politicians that are supposed to run the country, because we never chose to go be politicians, does not mean we cannot speak up and say, okay, that is not what the politician is supposed to be doing. The same thing when there are a lot of people that are not pastors, are not planning to be pastors, are not, I mean, let me put it like that, you know the way you say, let me give my life to God, God use me to reach the people, God use me, so people, I am a vessel, use me to this and that, there are some people that are not saying prayers like that, and it does not change the fact that they are born again Christians, they may be serving God in other ways in their lives, so people can serve God by just being ushers in their church, so people serve God by being cleaners or whatever in the church, but they say the office of a pastor is not something they have planned in their life. God can decide to call them up, but I'm just saying. But it doesn't mean that when you now see a person that goes and becomes a pastor and say God called them, 
Like if you see them doing something that is not biblically backed, you cannot say it. Right? Now, there are standards that have been set by the Bible as to these are the qualifications of a pastor or something like that. The things, the standard that are expected of them. Right? When you now see a pastor that is operating at a standard that is not the standard that is supposed to you can speak about it. You know all this one, they say the wife was changing the name of the bank and all of those things. These are things that happens when church is being treated like family business. Why can't these Pentecostal churches, why can't they ever set up these churches where it can be run like the Catholic church where they, it doesn't belong to anybody? Why is it so hard? I believe it's the love of money. That's what I believe. So I'm going by this report, what PM News has shared. So if she is allegedly... I can see that changing the name of a bank not one I don't know but like you see when they say it belongs to the church it belongs to the church to buy yeah you will not know who it really belongs to because if it was set up in a way that truly belongs to the church the wife shouldn't have even be able to change any document on her own so she was given the ultimate powers to be able to do it does it really belong to the church or does it belong to the family Let's think about this thing. Because there should be a committee in charge of something like that. That one signature should not be enough. If only the signature of his wife is enough, does it really belong to the church? Let's be honest. If focus on the things of God is what it's about, like the apostles that Jesus did in the Bible, will money ever actually be an issue? Let's not forget to, that video where they were trying to defend tithing. In that video, the church first said, you see, tithing is not about yourself, oh. It's not a for your own good. It is for your children and children and children and children's generation. Basically, from what he was saying, if you don't pay tithes, if I'm not misquoting him, you're going to leave curses for your generations unborn. But they are leaving a bank in their own names. Not just him, a lot of them are leaving empires for their generations unborn from collecting tithes and offering from everyday people. Other fear has been put in them. If these people have any fear of God, would they be fighting over bank or money in this way? Is it really about God or is it about lining their pockets? I keep saying these things. These people are rich. They are really very, very rich people. Yet they are fighting over more. What does that tell you? for Earthly wealth never satisfies. At the end of the day, when you look at the story, if it is infidelity that is the problem, is that really something that should be said about pastors? If it is money that is the problem, fighting over who will, uh, the bank or whatever they call it, should that really be happening? Is it not greed? Let's be honest. It's greed that will bring about fighting for stuff like this. And everyday church people come and they donate and they this and they that and all of those things. They don't sit back and say, where does this actually go? There was something I have not posted. I want to post it on Facebook. I'm going to post it on the community tab as well for you guys. You guys can check it out. And uh, it's a, there's a picture that showed poor children on the streets. And then there's that other one that showed people that look like uh, preachers. And they had this uh, color thing, you know. And you can see how well fed they are. And you can see the poor people begging on the streets. And you see how, especially in our communities, in African, let me even speak for Nigeria. That a lot of pastors have been empowered so much financially. Why there are so many poor people around us? Somebody will leave their house, carry big money in their pocket and say it's a seed. And they walk past the, their street. Their next door neighbor have no food. Their children are poor. We walk past them on the street, see a beggar that is begging, has no food, nothing. They will still find their way and go to the pastor that eats the best food, has expensive cars, has a private jet or whatever, and go and hand it over. And they think, oh yeah, you're giving to God. Jesus said, whatsoever you do to the least of my brethren, which is to my brothers and sisters, that you do unto me. When I was hungry, you gave me to eat. He didn't say when I already have food, you gave me to eat. A lot of people have misplaced the priority. And when stories like this happen, I'm not praying for it to happen, but it has happened. So we have to talk about it. When it happens, it shows you how those that already have a lot, they're fighting over more money, more money, more money. Is that coming from the spirit of God? What spirit guides this if it's not the spirit of greed? Like, let's be honest. And then if the infidelity they're talking about, if it's true, so infidelity is coming all the way from that top. What does that say? Let me tell you guys. If somebody cannot be the preacher, pastor, and live the life or the kind of quality, standard of life they're supposed to live, then they have to choose and say, I, I can't do this. So you get my point. To show you this aspect of it, I, I think it's unfortunate, but it's happening. You know, unfortunately, 
a lot of followers, their eyes will never open to see a lot of these things. Anyways, I saw that news and I wanted to share with you guys. Um, uh, as always, whatever your opinions are, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And with that, I'm going to say thank you for watching. Until the next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.